Welcome to another episode of the Building Blocks of Rock, where in each video I'll take a look at a different chord, riff, or lick shape as shown in my free web app, The Building Blocks of Rock, which you can find at guitarviz.com. In my previous video, we looked at a common lick you can use to break out of that basic pentatonic box shape. In this video, we'll cover a common way you can extend that lick and go even further up the neck into an area favored by everyone from B.B. King to Jimmy Page to Angus Young. The second part of the video is a lesson segment where I'll look at some of the examples slowed down up close from the player viewpoint. The video has chapters you can skip around, and as always, if you like what you see, please remember to like or subscribe. I'm calling this shape two double stops. Here's one, there's the second. The line between two notes indicates a double stop. Now, what is a double stop, you ask? You might read different definitions. I think of it as each, the notes in each double stop are a unit. You hear the notes in one and then the other. You don't mix and match. You don't bounce back and forth between them. Like. Uh, maybe the fret hand goes down, the fingers go down at the same time, maybe they don't. But the point is, you hear the notes in one, and then the other. You can get into position for this lick the same way we discussed in the previous video for the previous lick. Find that basic minor pentatonic scale shape. Let's say we're in G. We're soloing in the key of G, or we're playing over a G chord. First finger here at the third fret. Here's the basic scale shape. Here's the upper note on the third string of the scale shape. Move it up two frets. Reach over and grab the upper note on the second string of the scale shape. There's your first double stop. Now move both fingers two frets higher. Keep the same shape, just move it two frets higher. That's the second double stop. I'm using the second and third fingers. In a minute, we'll talk about why sometimes you might want to use the first and second fingers instead. You can play the notes in each double stop as individual notes. Example, solo and I feel fine. Or you can play them sounding at the same time. You hit both strings together. Example, beginning of the outro solo in Pride and Joy. And when you do that, it's common to hear little slides back and forth between the two double stops. You keep both fingers down as you slide back or forth. Again, pride and joy. Or this one, I'm dating myself here, but... The solo in Your Mama Don't Dance, Your Daddy Don't Rock and Roll starts in C up here with a little lick like this. Again, keep both fingers down as you slide back and forth. But when you hear the notes in the double stop as individual notes, usually you'll hear a little slide along the third string. Rarely along the second string, you hardly ever hear something like this. It's usually along the third string. Same concept as that previous lick we were looking at. Just moved up two frets. Example, halfway through the first, halfway through the solo when you shook me. Starts off with that previous lick. Then sliding up to that second double stop. Now sometimes you might want to use the second and third fingers for this lick, especially if you're trying to work in adjacent licks that use the first finger bar. Example, Hell's Bells, the solo. See how Angus was using that first finger right down below? These double stops form common patterns going up and down the neck. Example. Notice how I'm only using two shapes, the one we're looking at and the first finger bar. Easier to have the first finger focus on doing the bar while you leave the second and third finger to work with this other shape. But there are other times when you might want to use the first and second finger for those double stops instead of the second and third finger. If you're using your first and second fingers for the double stops, 
your second fingers here on the third string. And it becomes easier to go into some of the common licks in this position. Like bending the first string. Or second string. These are common moves that are easier if you've got your second finger there on the third string instead of the third finger. Here's a common move. After playing around with this lick, you end up on the higher double stop with your first finger here on the second string. You're now in this position and can play licks like this. Major or this. Minor. This. Neither. So it's common to move up into this lick from that most basic minor pentatonic scale shape. A lot of the examples do that, but it's also good to know how to go directly to this lick instead of thinking, well, I have to find this scale shape and then turn right and head up the neck a few frets. If you know your pentatonic scale shapes, this lick is found in the same area as this scale shape. Compare the lick to the scale, you can see how it fits in. But also notice how one of the notes in the lick isn't found in the minor pentatonic scale. More about that in a minute. You can more easily find this lick and that second pentatonic scale shape by becoming more familiar with other common shapes that live in this same area. Fourth string root power chords. Movable D chord shapes. Compare the lick to those shapes to see how it fits in. What these shapes all have in common is an underlying D chord shape. This is the D in caged. And the shapes in this area all live a few frets above that basic E shape bar chord or minor pentatonic scale shape. They live up here a few frets higher. To find shapes in this area, you can look on the fourth string for your root note. Example, you want to use this lick in G. You're soloing in the key of G, or you're playing over a G chord. On the fourth string, a G will be here at the fifth fret. Then just place your fingers relative to the root. Here's the root. Here's the first double stop. Here's the second double stop. Click on the shape, the lick shape, to see the intervals. The first double stop, you've got a fifth and a flat seventh. Second double stop, you've got the root and the sixth, kind of a cool tone. And compare the tones in the chords to the tones in the lick. You'll see some similarities. And that's one of the benefits of the cage system. By thinking about the underlying shape, you not only get a better sense of where to put your fingers, but also what type of sound those notes are gonna make. After a while of playing, you get familiar with the sound of the fifth, what the fifth in a chord is gonna sound like, or what the flat seventh in a chord is gonna sound like, and you can transfer that to licks and riffs too. So looking at the tones in the lick, again, one of them is the sixth, that's the purple note. The sixth is an interesting tone. It's not found in the minor pentatonic scale, but you'll sometimes hear it along with notes from the minor pentatonic scale especially up here in this position, where say you've gone through the lick, and now your first finger is on the second string, that's the root note, and you're in position to play licks like this. Minor, but with the six. Or even this. Minor, but you've got the six, this time on the first string. You're bending from the fifth to the six. So this lick is not just a handy way to get from one place to another on the neck, it's also a way to add color to your solos and can work in both major and minor. I Feel Fine is in the key of G. George starts his solo by sliding up the third string into that first double stop, sliding again into the second double stop, back to the first double stop, before sliding home using that lick from the previous video. You shook me all night long. Also in the key of G, Angus starts off down here at the third fret with licks from this basic minor pentatonic scale shape. 
Then he gets into this lick the same way George does by starting with this little slide at the third string into the first double stop. Sliding again into the second one. But now instead of going back down the neck, he stays here with leaving his first finger there and he's in position to do these licks. Before continuing up the neck. I'll look at this lick and also the first half of his solo later on in the lesson segment. All Along the Watchtower, Jimi Hendrix version. Songs in the key of C sharp minor, down to the half step so it sounds more like C minor. In the middle of the song, after the wah-wah pedal section, Jimmy plays these phrases a few times. He's riffing off the underlying chords, C sharp minor, B, A. Using these partial bars, triads, where you can do things on the top strings with your additional fingers. C sharp minor, down to B, same thing except major, into the A triad. But then where do these come from? They don't have much to do with the key of the song, C sharp minor. To me, I think it's this lick we've been looking at. The roots here in A on the fourth string, seventh fret. It's an example of how when you're soloing or adding fills, if you just change, try changing the frame of reference sometimes from the key to the root of the chord. It doesn't need to be complicated. You don't need to mentally calculate, oh, the flat third of the chord is the same as the fifth of the key. No, just mentally move that root from the key, C sharp minor, down to A, the chord, for a few bars or however long the A chord lasts, and try different riffs and licks based on that root being A. They may work, they may not, but it's a great way to experiment and come up with some new sounds. The second solo in Heartbreaker is a good example. It ties together some of the things we've been talking about. He's in the key of A. He starts off down here. Blazing through several positions in the space of a couple bars in A, G, up to the E, and he winds up up here in D the area we've been talking about. And now he's playing licks like this. And now, watch carefully, here it comes. Goes by in the blink of an eye, but he's going from that one double stop up to that second one, where now he's in this position and his first finger's on the second string and he's playing licks like this. Recognize that? That's the sound of the fifth being bent up to the sixth. Etc., etc. So, going through several different areas of caged. Normal speed. Phrase by phrase. He starts off with the bend, slowly leaning into it, adding vibrato as he goes along. Then into this phrase where the second bend, he'll start kind of flat and slowly release it. Letting these two notes ring out together. Now that phrase right there you sometimes see in videos or tabs as being on the sixth string. But watch video of him, he's going down to the first string, excuse me, the first fret, 
which makes sense because number one, it's a common pattern. And number two, instead of, it makes no sense that he would come from here up to there if you're using the sixth string, but if you're using the first fret of the fifth string, you can use your middle finger or ring finger for here, and then that leaves your first finger free to quickly go to this bar. Continuing on from this point. Here's the lick we've been looking at. Into these bends. It's a whole step bend followed by a half step. All along the Watchtower, Jimi Hendrix version. This is the solo after the wah wah pedal solo, the chord fragments. He's down tuned to half step. I'm in standard tuning here. Slow speed, three, four. Phrase by phrase. He's playing these chord fragments, chord riffs, based off the underlying chords C sharp minor at the ninth fret, B, A. Start at the ninth fret. Three, four. Then he slides into the next one, the B, up the third string. Same thing on the A. Then into the weird little riff, the lick, the subject of this video. Complete with a weird little thing there at the end where he slides up an additional three frets. Repeat, only this time sliding up the fourth string. This time it's no lick, instead it's just percussive 16th notes. Next phrase, again slide up the fourth string. That was a slide up the third string, same as this one, slide up the third string. Here are the unison bends that end the phrase. To my ear, it's hard to tell with all the echo and stuff going on, but to my ear, it sounds like he plucks both strings at the start of each note as he climbs up, with some exceptions. Something like this, three, four. If you want to go on and learn the whole song and not just the lick, here's some recommendations I have for learning those three songs that I have at the start of my video. I Feel Fine, Sam Popkin, great Beatles channel, guitar covers, lots of detail. The video he has is called George's Parts and I Feel Fine. Uh, but of course you get the solo and also George was doubling 
uh, John's main riff. So you'll learn both the solo and the riff and lots of other interesting little details there. For All Along the Watchtower, Doug at 12 Foot Chain has a very good video, how to play, how to play it just like the record, all the different parts in the song. Again, lots of detail there. And finally, You Shook Me All Night Long. I wasn't familiar with this guy, Andre Kozuma, but he has a really good video called You Shook Me All Night Long, Details and Secrets. And he gets the main riff right. And Andre also references what I think is the gold standard for how Angus played it, which is a close-up video of him on the Howard Stern Show. Okay, that's it for this time. Again, if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, please remember to like or subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.